If you've seen Sci-Fi Channel's hit series, The Magicians, you definitely know who Jay Taylor is. And if you don't know, you will probably want to do some binge watching to get caught up. She's fabulous. As the beautiful, no-nonsense, and emotionally complex Katie Orloff Diaz, Jade weaves this incredible tapestry of depth and soul. In its second season, she provides us with more perspective on Katie's heart, passion, and her strength. You know, Jade's ability to craft rich characters is evident in every role she takes on. This is very apparent from appearances in TNT's Murder in the First, to NBC's Aquarius, or even HBO's True Blood. There is always authenticity. You know, I truly believe the essence of this gift comes from her beautiful life story and her personal journey she shared with us. So Liberty Magazine presents Jay Taylor, a view from the inside. So Jade, I have Wonderful. been looking forward to this interview with you. I really have. Um, the Me more, too. Thank yeah, you. yeah, the, yeah. The more that I, more that I read about you, the more that I was like, okay, I wish this interview was like sooner because I, I have all these questions I want to ask her. So. Fire away. Um. Let's start from the beginning. Um, now, you grew up in California. Sure. You grew up in California, correct? Yes, I did um, for the most part, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Did, did, you, um, did you always know, I mean, you're, you're in this backdrop, like you grew up in Hollywood, right? Like around Hollywood, California I, area? I was, born in, I was born in Hollywood, technically, but I grew up mostly um, in the Valley. Oh, okay, yeah. Yes, I'm a Valley girl. I'm no, just kidding. Um, <laughs> Um, um, so, so I grew up in Los Angeles area for the most part. And, um, yeah, I guess, well, my mom was in entertainment uh, wow. before I was born. She was, yeah, she was, uh, an actress and she was in the ice capades and she was, do you remember the, the old, uh, variety show, Donnie and Marie? Oh yeah. Donnie Marie Osmond show. Oh yeah. So she was on the Donnie and Marie Osmond show, and she played Donnie's love interest, and she was the head ice skater on that show, and um, and did a lot of musical theater. And so I grew up with my mom like waking me up to, you know, the Good Morning songs and singing in the rain. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. Good morning, good morning. That Aww. one. So she woke me up to that every morning. Oh, um, so that is so always... sweet. <laughs> always in my blood in a sense mm-hmm. uh, she just always played music and had and so my first love was music um, she always had um, uh, was very very supportive of, of just being creative I mean, she, uh, up until I was about seven eight she was very hands-on and um, we would do arts and crafts and just she just wanted us to feel free to express ourselves I actually had an agent at a year old um, we never pursued it because my dad didn't want to um, at the time, but I was with William Morris Agency, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, I was a very rambunctious, boisterous child, apparently. Um, and so, yeah, so I was signed at a year old, and, and then my dad didn't want to pursue it, and so we just put that on hold. But my mom was still very supportive in allowing me to um, do the art. So I, was, I started out as a dancer when I was four gymnastics at um at three actually um and Whoa. then singing at seven yeah very so early on i think it was basically because i had too much energy and she didn't know what to do with it but, <laughs> <laughs> but she said that it was to allow me to be creative um and what was wonderful is we didn't have the money to do that and so um so I really like admire my mom for finding a way to do it she like went through getting like um, like financial aid, talking to the teachers, doing like after credit, like after curricular programs, so that uh, my brother and I could be a part of different things um, when we didn't have the funds to do so. So, um, so yeah, so that was really, um, I really admire and appreciate my mom for doing that. And then, so at seven, um, I sort of went through this really strange period where I stopped talking. <laughs> okay. Wow. Um, we didn't. It wasn't the easiest upbringing. Mm-hmm. And so I think I just, because of that, I just um, sort of shut down. And my mom says that 
she put me in singing lessons to give me my voice back. And so I started singing lessons at seven and then um, acting class at 10. And my mom put me in class with an old um, friend of hers, Dee Wallace, who is now Dee Wallace Stone, but most of her most people know her as the mom in E.T. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. So, so I fell in love with acting and then just continued on from there. And uh, my mom, at around nine years old, she started to, my parents got divorced young, so I was like eight or nine, and um, she had to make a living, so she started going to New York half the time and um, and supporting us by, by uh, making money out there. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so yeah, so basically uh, it allowed my brother and I to have some freedom to just create on our own and, and find our path. Wow. So, you, so we did. So you you knew at a very early age that this is what you mm-hmm. wanted to do. Yeah. You wanted to be in the yeah, performing arts. So. And did you go? Very you, much so. Now, I, I always knew. Now I heard. Now I read. You went to a performing arts school, high school in California. Well, it was, it wasn't technically a performing arts school, but it was predominantly performing arts okay. because. So I commuted over to Calabasas, and Calabasas, ah. as most people know of today is um like where the kardashians are from <laughs> right and um so i was commuting over from woodland hills over to there because there were so many actors and um and celebrities donating to calabasas high school that our performing arts programs was the top-notch performing arts programs um just around and so we were really really lucky to have um the best teachers and the best and just a lot of funds that went towards performing arts and so we I was in um a competitive choir two of them both um our our main choir mm-hmm. uh Vivace and then also um we had an instrumental instrumental sorry I, it was called instrumental it was an acapella choir called instrumental oh. um, that was <laughs> <Okay>. also <laughs> It got confusing, um, but we uh, we toured as well, and we uh, we, we competed, and so um, yeah, we were, it was really really a gift to be able to work with them, and we had the best uh, plays and musicals put on, and so I really got to um, immerse myself in that in high school. Wow, that is incredible. Yeah. So I mean, I yeah. you, you 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 have so many, now you're you're still very young. Uh, younger than me, but young. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> but in the most, in the I'll in the best, and no, in, in the best way. And you've you've got all these acting credits already. I mean, you've got an impressive you. lineup, and I mean, and uh, this explosion now of really really prominent roles. Uh, I mean, we'll get we'll get to the musicians in a moment, but uh, sure. Um, you're you've got the uh, the big screen now with higher power and alter mm-hmm. perception. Um, what's yeah. this time like for you right now as an actor? Oh, man, it's such a gift. It's such a gift. It, you know, it feels like I've been doing this forever, and it, because I've been doing it my whole life, but um, for, for it to be in a place of, um, uh, I mean, it's just, it's been really lucrative and really wonderful the past couple of years in particular. And it's, it's sort of a gift to see that all that hard work paid off because it really did take me nearly 10 years to, um, to really solidify myself in, yeah. in the industry and, and get to this level. And so um, it's, I, there's not a day that goes by that I'm not grateful or in awe that I'm standing in the place that I dreamt of for so long. Wow. Wow. That vision was there for you, you know. Now, mm-hmm. now, yeah. Rick, Rick, Rick has probably told you, or you don't know. I am a fan of the show of the magicians. Oh, I love M- that. G, uh, from <laughs> from 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 seeing Rick as Dean Fogg sitting on the park bench from the first episode. So good, right? <laughs> it, it, yeah, I, I was I was like, okay, I, this is it. I'm 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 hooked. Um, while season one was completely amazing and here we are in season Mm -hmm. two which is just blockbusters in the first couple of of episodes Um, what's the next journey for Katie I mean 
Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What's what's going on with her? I mean, what I mean, I I know you can't give away all well, the I secrets, you. <laughs> <laughs> but. <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, it's a big journey for her this season. You know, last season, um, um, you saw her go through all sorts of ups and downs, and this season is um, not dissimilar to that. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, but it's it's a very different journey for her. You mm-hmm. see her come um, back in a very dark place, mm. um, having witnessed all those things that she did with. Um, both her mother having to deal with the, the split from Penny, but also yeah. um, witnessing what happened to Julia and her friends. Yeah. And um, so she does come back in a very, very haunted, dark place. And I think she seeks redemption in a lot of ways. Um, uh, so she does go on this really intense journey. And it's a journey of vulnerability this year. Mm. You see a lot more layers to her, a lot more heart. Wow. Um you don't like you see, I mean Katie is a tough girl but you definitely don't see um you see some of those walls come down a bit mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um more of more of a human side to her so it's for me it was a really really fun season to take her on this emotional journey mm-hmm. and um you see her create a really interesting uh relationship with Julia and um, and what yeah. that entails, I can't reveal too much. <laughs> that you have to watch. Uh, but it, it it sort of it'll it'll come into play in episode four, and you'll see, uh, or at least it'll start to. Okay, so um, so we're all marking um, that down. Episode four. Yeah. <laughs> episode four. <laughs> any chance episode of four. any yeah. chance of Penny and Katie? You know getting back together well you know that's that's been I'm, I'm not going to tell you whether or not they get back together but i will tell you that they do meet up again okay. In, okay. In, a, in a form um i mean obviously that that relationship is uh unfinished you in know so many ways and so yeah go ahead yeah the writing for the characters i mean is just so yeah. outstanding i mean um i mean you can tell me but it feels like when I watch the show that every single character, um, it's almost like an ensemble show where there's not one specific principle. Um, everyone, yeah. everyone has a chance to really dive deep into their characters and tell their character's story because there, there's depth there, you know. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. That's what I appreciate about it. Is, um, I miss so many things I appreciate about the show, but I really love, and this is something that I've gotten from fan feedback, is just how um, how there's a character for everyone to fall in love with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or, or multiple characters, because you can there's a relatability in each and every one of them. Mm-hmm. And I think that's the beauty of an ensemble cast, is there's there's so much to, to pick and choose from and so much to be inspired by or impacted by in some way. Wow. I, I, again, a, a fan loving every moment of watching, you know, how, oh, how yeah. things, yeah, how things are unfolding. Uh, and, you know, I'm an older guy. So, and, and, you know, I'm very, as Rick would tell you, I'm very discerning about things, especially sci-fi. I, I don't like, mm-hmm. the, I, I like deep, deep kind of things when it comes to that. And uh, yeah. to see how each of you are expressing yourselves through these characters and the interaction between the characters, it's it's very special to see on and, and on the small screen. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, we have an amazing team of of creators and writers that um, do such an incredible job of of um, of bringing this like fantasy world to life mm-hmm. but I think also they ground it and so do the actors I and mean, it's very grounded in reality and and, and it's sort of like you, you're going through these human experiences through these magical worlds right. so it's really um, and I think everyone needs a little fantasy and um, inspiration in their lives right now <laughs> everybody needs a little fillery <laughs> yeah everyone needs a little fillery <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> um, with Solivity, there, yeah. there's typically there's always two questions that I ask uh, our guests uh, around what they do in life 
And, mm -hmm. and, I, and I, the first question is, what does the word passion mean to you? Or what does it feel like mm -hmm. to you? Oh, gosh, it feels like a fire in my gut and in my heart. It's um, what it, to me, the, the word that comes to mind is purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and I've always felt like I've had a, I have a great purpose mm -hmm. in life. And um, both in my work and what my work could potentially do for people, but also with the platform that I, I hope to create to be able to make a big difference in the world. Um, I've always felt this really deep-seated purpose and desire to inspire people. And, um, and so that, for me, I'm so passionate about that, and I'm so passionate about humans and telling human stories mm -hmm. um, and, um, and creating empathy in the world. And so for me, that's, that's what my passion is. Wow. And so, creativity is inspiration, is uplifting people, empowering people, inspiring people. Wow. That is absolutely beautiful. And see, you already went to the second question, mm -hmm. which is what does purpose mean? So the two are intertwined yeah. for you. Absolutely. You know, absolutely they are. Wow. Now, yeah, because without purpose, I don't know that people have passion mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, I think, or I mean, I mean, people can have passions for, like, I have passions for my pets that I love very much. Right. And and um, <laughs> but I think, um, but also passion is a deep seated love for something. And and I think if you love something, there's a purpose there. You have purpose and intent to create something and do something about that passion. Well, I have one final request, and and sure. and, and, and this is and this is this is from what I've heard uh, about you. you. You said in the beginning, and you're gonna, you're gonna probably laugh when I say this, you said in the beginning that mm. singing is your first love. So would you grace yes. us with a little bit of singing? Maybe God, uh, maybe God <laughs> bless the child, maybe? That is a good choice. Um, <laughs> I have been sick. I'm just a, just a forewarning. I've been coughing up a storm, but I will do it anyway. Uh, just a little bit, just a, just, just a teaser, just yeah. a teaser. I'll just sound a little husky. Okay. And that's got so okay. And that's an absolute. So the Bible says, and it's still in you. Mama may have, and Papa he may have, but God bless the child. Got his own. It's got his own. Wow. <laughs> clap, 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 clap. The audience goes crazy. Aww. And with that, I will say thank you so much, Jay, Aww, for, for, for giving and sharing your story and your purpose, your oh passion. Oh, my gosh, of course. Um, absolutely thank you. Thank you so much for wonderful. doing this and sharing these stories with people. We hope that you've enjoyed our personal interview, Jay Taylor, of You From The Inside. We really want to thank Jade for allowing us to share her personal story with the Soul Liberty community. Please stay tuned for future interviews with people just like you who are learning to live their lives with passion and purpose. Until then, we wish you all love, light, and of course, good living.